Okay, we have seen the relationship between the infinitesimal generator and the state transition probability matrix. So at this time, we are ready to define transient distributions. And here, well, well we have defined this earlier, but let's recall uh, the transition, transient distribution uh, is denoted in this way. This is the probability that at time t, you will see the Markov chain in state i, okay? So this probability, and using these components, we define the vector pi t, the distribution at time t. Um, we, 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 are, we would like to uh, write this uh, distribution uh, in terms of, let's say the initial distribution pi at zero and uh, either the state transition probability matrix or the infinitesimal generator because we have already established their relationship. Uh, for this purpose, let's first consider the transitions within time h, where of course h will be a small value. So state transition within time h um, into let's say state j. So this is simply the probability that you will observe the Markov chain at time t plus h in state j. So that could happen um, while the, the uh, Markov chain was in state i at time t and within that period from t to t plus h within that duration of h you made a transition from state i to state j if you sum these products over all possible i values you obtain you should obtain the probability of observing the markov chain at time t plus h in state j okay so again here um what you do is, uh, first of all, well, you can write this as, here you have all states i, you can write this as state j and all the other ones. So you can write this as pi j t times pi j j h plus all states that are not j pi i times pij within time h, okay? This is what we have done here. And this term here, well, here uh, we have subtracted one pi j and we also subtract one pi j here, okay? And then divide both sides by h and then take the limit as h goes to zero. Similarly, on the left-hand side, you see the derivative of pi with respect to time. And on the right hand side, by definition, you see pi j times q sub jj. From this term, I will get pi sub, uh, sorry, q sub jj. And from this term, I will get q sub ij. Okay. And therefore, this whole thing uh, is going to be the sum over all i's pi i times q sub ij, right? And in matrix notation, we can write this as the derivative of pi is equal to pi times q, okay? And obviously, if you plug in um, zero here, you will get, um, well, th this is the solution because this as a whole, if you see, is a differential equation, again, pi of t, the derivative of pi of t equals pi of t times q. Therefore, um, you will have the solution as pi of t equals some constant times e to the power q times t. And that constant obviously turns out to be pi zero. If you take the initial distribution as pi zero, that's your initial value, okay? So when you plug in t equals zero, you get that pi zero should equal that constant times e to the zero, which is identity. Therefore, that should be, the constant should be pi zero. And obviously, as we have seen earlier, e to the power qt is pt, state transition probability matrix. So that equation can be written as pi of t equals pi of zero times p of t 
which is quite intuitive. Why? Because this is the distribution at time zero. And this is the uh, state transition probability matrix within time t. So that means you, are, you vary in this distribution at time zero and an amount of t time passes. And this is the transition probability matrix. So you multiply them. What you get is the distribution at time t, which makes perfect sense. Okay, next we are going to uh, talk about holding times. Uh, first, let's define what holding times are. The time that the Markov chain stays in state J before making a transition out of J is called the holding time in state J. Okay, so that's the duration um, the Markov chain stays in state J at each visit. Okay, so th th this is the mathematical definition. At zero, you are in J. At, at t, you are not in j. So this is the set of um, the t values where you are not in j. And infer means the infimum, which means essentially the minimum value. So that is the minimum value where you are not in j. That means the, the instant where you moved out of state j. So this is how you define uh, holding times uh, rigorously, okay? So this is called the holding time, the, 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 the amount of time the Markov chain spends in state J. Now, in, if you write the probability that the holding time exceeds T plus tau, given that it already has exceeded tau, I can write this as, well, um, I was at state J at time U, and then a tau amount of time passed, I'm at still j, so these two I have observed. Given these, and a further amount of time t has passed, so at time u plus tau plus t, I'm still at j. Okay, I've not made the transition yet out of state j. So this is my uh, conditional probability defined as here, okay? But then you see X here is a Markov chain. So inherently it's a Markov process. So since U of tau is more recent than U, okay, this goes away due to the Markov property. So I'm left with this. So what is this? This is the probability that I was in state J at time U plus tau and I'm still at state J at time u plus tau plus t. And by definition, this is the transition probability within time t from state j to state j, okay? But you see, this is equal to the probability, well, this conditional probability you see uh, is equal to the holding time being just greater than t, okay? What this says is the holding time t sub j is memorialist. And this is a continuous distribution. So as we have discussed at the beginning of the, uh, the, the course, um, the only continuous distribution that has the memorialist property is the exponential distribution, which means, well, this is quite important, the holding times of a continuous Markov chain are exponential distributions, exponential random variables. That means the Markov chain visits a state and the time, the duration, the Markov chain is in that state is an exponential random variable. Okay, it stays there at an exponential random amount of time and then transits out, goes into another state. And in that state, it stays again for an exponential distributed amount of time. Okay, this is a very important property of continuous time Markov chains. 